Hello, this is Scott. Welcome back to my YouTube channel where I cover a variety of different data science and analytics topics, including open discussions, um, open so source software, um, hands-on demonstrations, illustrations, etc. So I'm continuing on with a hands-on series on association rules and link analytics. Um, the last two sessions were in Statistica. Uh, and then today we're covering this uh, R51. So I'm going to be talking about R in R Studio and, <clears throat> excuse me, market basket analysis in R. So rec recommender systems type stuff. All right. So the issue here is we have um, grocery baskets, right? So we have transactions within a, uh, a grocery and we want to look at items that shoppers tend to associate right so we'll we'll see this play out in just a minute but essentially if i buy bread what's the most likely thing that i'm going to buy with bread or if i buy milk what's the most likely thing i'm going to buy or if i buy wine and we'll we'll see that in just a minute how that plays out i'm going to try a little bit with the magnifier uh this time as well um just so that people can see the code so let me let me try to do that um if I go in, let me see if I can get back to the top here uh, and over. Come on. Come on, R. <laughs> let me. Uh, well, I've, I've got to practice that some. So hopefully you can see my screen. Um, I'm going to use some of these commands. <clears throat> and then uh, I'm actually going to use a couple of different libraries, some that are required here, some that I'm going to use for things other than association rules. So let me try that one more time. And if I slide this, ah, okay. Um, well, so I'm going to use uh, this, this A rules package, and this is essentially the association rules and then this pander, I'm going to use this for a, uh, a graphical function. This A rules viz is the association rules, and you can create some pretty cool uh, visualizations within R. And I'm going to use just Hyman's FPP2 just because I'm going to use a piping statement here in, in just a second. So um, I wish there was some sort of intermediary, intermediate zoom here. But anyway, so. Um, so those are the library statements. This next statement is just loading data. And so we're going to load just a CSV here. This is actually data from, I believe it's University of California, Irvine, UCI, their machine learning data sets, which is available online. So you can, you can get your own data sets there. And I'm local drive. And so I'm just going to execute that. I load that data in. And then I can look at the the data here. Uh, hopefully you can see this. It says transaction in sparse format, 935 transactions or rows, 169 items or columns. And then if we do a summary, we get this output here. So I can see here again the um, the number the, and the uh, number of columns, and then I can actually get this density statistic. So density is 2.6%. So this is not a real dense data set. I can see the most frequent items, whole milk, 25, 13, vegetables, 1903, rolls, buns, 1809, sodas, 1715, then yogurt, and then other. Um, I can see the uh, for the first, first item purchased, what the frequency is for the first item, there, there's 2,159, and then the second item, 1,643. So this this will um, uh, add up to our 90, 98.35 rows. Um, and let's see, what else? Oh, uh, this mean, this 4.4, .4, mean means that there are on average if you look at the rows there are 4.4 items per basket so that's what's in within a basket 
So um, again, less than five atoms in a particular basket. I'm gonna pause for just a second. I'm gonna actually bring up the data. Okay, so this is the data set. I probably should have shown this first off. But again, this, these are market baskets. So each one, each row is a basket, and there were 9,835, 9, I believe, baskets in this analysis. And so this person bought citrus fruit, semi-finished bread, margarine, and ready soups. This next person uh, bought tropical fruit, yogurt, coffee, et cetera. And again, the statistics that I was showing, if we look at um, people with only one item plus people with two items, plus people with three items, plus people with four items, plus people with five items, et cetera, that would equal the 98.35. So if I go back to our studio, again, these statistics right here, it's how many carts have one item, how many carts have two, how many have three, four, five, et cetera. And again, the average of the overall data is 4.4, the median is three. All right, so let's move on. Um, if I look at item frequency, so um, the I, I'm I'm basically looking at uh, the the um, percent frequency of all of these different items. Okay, so we can see whole whole milk, other vegetables, rolled buns, soda. So that's that item frequency plot um, command right here. If I want to look at the um, across table, I can do that and that's the reason I loaded that pander library is to get this this table right here so this is very informative so um, what what this essentially means is that uh, the overall for whole milk is uh, 25.56 or 25.6 percent and again we can see this in this first bar um, if you look at whole milk and a combination of whole milk and other vegetables that accounts for seven and a half percent whole milk in rolls and buns, 5.7 percent, et cetera. So you can look at the, 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 the cross table frequencies for that. Um, then let's get into uh, assigning the rules. So we're going to assign these rules into this, this variable uh, grocery rules. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort the top rules based on lift. So I'm going to do that and then now we get here at the bottom we can see uh, some pretty cool stuff and this again is sorted by lift this is probably the most most important statistic here um, and it, it's a combination it, it's a function of the support and the confidence which I'll define in just a second but based on this lift this says the left hand side says that if someone has bottled beer and red blush wine in their cart then they are likely to have liquor. The combination of these three product, these three items, the beer, the wine, and the liquor, occurs in 0.2%. That's what the support number is. In other words, that's the um, joint probability of those three items. And then this confidence is the conditional probability. It says, what is the probability of liquor given that someone has bottled beer and red wine in their cart? And that's 40%, 40% um, confidence. And then a combination of that is, is the lift itself. And uh, so we can see what, what items are running together. No, no surprise, somebody's having a party here uh, with, with the liquor and the beer and the wine. Here, this is bread and white bread and ham, and this is processed cheese. It has actually the same support, a little bit different confidence. It's 38% confidence, and you can see the count and the lift statistic for that. Um, the lift statistic is lower because confidence is a bit lower. Um, so anyway, so this is very important. Also, this is a similar view. This is just sorted with the support looking at the support itself so the the items that are most supported are other vegetables um then whole milk if other vegetables exist then milk um if whole milk then other vegetables obviously that's just the converse interesting 
uh, that, you know, the, the support obviously is the same. It's the joint. The conditional is, is different. Um, so let's see. Let's just do a couple quick plots. I'm going to use this this a priori here now function and hopefully you can see that you can take a, a shot of that um, and then I'm going to run that um, and then I'm going to plot now that I've assigned that to a variable I'm going to actually plot that out that puts soda in the center here and then the size of the circle is the likelihood that you're going to purchase something else given soda um, another view of that is I can do this a priori um, as well here and um, I can switch it up and I can make it a little more granular so if I do that that should come in well oh I wasn't on the, the line I thought it was um, there it is. So soda is in the center now, and then I can see things with uh, I've lowered the threshold, so um, things things are popping out um, here as well, uh, a lot more, right? The same ones as 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 before, but I've added you know several others to the mix, um, and actually I think that's that's enough for for this session. So hopefully that was meaningful and uh, it's very powerful. These these two packages, the you know primarily this A rules and this A rules biz, you should check them out and hopefully you'll join me again in the future. Thanks.